school funding in this country is in crisis. Until three years ago, I was a maths teacher, but since 2013, I've been watching my school's funding go down. I was also a union rep, and so I had to attend redundancy meetings for teachers and teaching assistants whose schools could no longer afford to employ them. So I started asking around, and being a maths teacher, I began investigating the numbers. I realised that the government's promise to protect school funding just wasn't true. The reality for almost all schools was less money. I realised that schools had been steadily losing money for years. That's meant bigger classes, less individual support for children, and less money for art, sport and music. I have two children myself. I worry every day about the impact on their education. And that's why now I'm putting all my energy into protecting school funding. In his manifesto in 2015, David Cameron promised that his government would protect school funding. Then at the 2017 election, Theresa May even promised to spend £4 billion more. And now, Boris Johnson has promised to level up school funding further. All of which sounds like schools must be doing really well, but I'm afraid these promises are deliberately misleading. Which is why I worked out the numbers for every school in the country so that parents could see what this would mean for their children. Give me a couple of minutes and I'll explain how it all breaks down. First, I'll talk through how school funding works. Next, we'll look at how much schools have lost and the impact of the cuts. Third, what the government needs to do to solve the funding crisis. And finally, how we work together to win that change. In order to understand why school funding is in crisis, it's important to understand how school funding works. It isn't entirely straightforward, but we'll go through it step by step. Clearly, the most important thing is how much money is in the pot, and secondly, how that money gets distributed. The national school's budget is set by the government. They decide how much schools in each local area will get. Then, in each area, the local school's forum, made up of heads and governors, divvies up the money amongst all the schools. That includes academies and free schools. There are separate funds for children with special educational needs, sick formers, children in early years, and the pupil premium. These are all dealt with separately to what's called the school's block. But of course, the size of these budgets has an impact on all children. Schools have a duty to meet the needs of every child, and rightly so. This Prime Minister, as well as his predecessors, Theresa May and David Cameron, claims to be spending more money on education than ever before. On the face of it, that might seem right, but when you take into account rising school costs, think about it, pencils, textbooks, sports equipment, none of these things cost the same as they did in 2015. Things start to look very different indeed. Then, when you take into account how many pupils the budget has to cover, the numbers get worse still. Most schools have been dealing with cuts for the last four years. Since 2015, the average amount spent on a pupil has fallen from £5,000 a year to just under £4,700. The government needs to put in an extra £2.4 billion to put that right, but they haven't. They've just put in £60 per pupil. It's good that the government has finally recognised that they can't keep on cutting, but actually they need to do much more than that. According to the latest figures from the government, that translates into 83% of schools in England still losing out next year compared with 2015. Thanks to the incredible campaign led by parents, staff and unions over the last few years, we forced successive governments to take notice. Both Theresa May and Boris Johnson have been forced to announce funding increases for schools as a direct result of our campaign. That's great in principle, but I'm afraid the truth is it simply isn't enough to make up for the cuts. Since 2015, every Prime Minister has claimed to be putting more money into schools than ever before. These claims just don't stack up when you take into account the whole school budget, rising costs and pupil numbers. 
even accounting for the additional funding announced by the government in the summer of 2019, schools in England will be £2 billion poorer than in 2015. Now schools are at breaking point. Based on the government's own figures, England's primary school children are taught in the largest classes since the year 2000. That makes them the biggest in the developed world. The picture in secondary schools is even worse. The number of children taught in classes over 30 is at its highest since 1981, and class sizes are rising at their fastest ever rate. Inevitably, more children per teacher means less individual attention and support for each child. There are more pupils in 2015, but 3,500 fewer teachers. Funding cuts are reducing curriculums. Subjects like music, languages, art and design are being removed as a result of the pressure. And in the worst hit schools, even the most basic provision is on the line. There are now dozens of schools that are only open for four and a half days a week. Incredibly, when asked, Boris Johnson wouldn't even commit his government to ensuring that every child could go to school for a full week. Many of these figures are startling, but when you go and talk to head teachers, parents and governors, it starts to hit home exactly what's at stake. I'm speaking out about school cuts and about school funding because I care about my own school but also because I genuinely don't think that most members of parliament or most members of the public actually know the truth. When school ministers say they preserve the education budget, people think that schools remain well funded. If they ask head teachers, they'll find out that in every school in the country, the amounts of money we're receiving are going down. And in some schools, they're going down very rapidly. Since I've been at St Joseph's, the money coming into St Joseph's has been pretty flat, which means it hasn't increased massively, and although costs have increased dramatically. So the net result of that is, we haven't got the money we used to have. We're going to end up at a point where all I can afford is a class teacher in front of a class, with no support staff at all. I realised that in my area, a lot of the schools were just losing out. They were having a lot of the same problems as my school was having, and the schools in my area are just not adequately funded. And so we need to ensure that they are. A lot of parents have been kept in the dark about school cuts and the kind of effects that their school has been having. So it's really important that we go out and leaflet and that we make parents aware of the problems that their schools are facing and the realities that are happening inside because our students deserve more. My fear is that with fewer people on staff, our priorities will start to focus on core subjects and not developing the whole child. And I think particularly in primary education, it's vital to remind yourselves that we're not in the business of manufacturing identical boxes. These are children, these are people, and it's their future that we can influence. The big difference that most of the students will notice is in the size of their classes. The second is that with our sixth form students, we've actually had to reduce the number of lessons they get. They will also begin to notice that we have fewer options available to them, fewer activities being organised, or there are only activities for those who can afford to pay, and that's no way to run a school. The school cuts in our school have just been disastrous. The impact is very clear for everyone to see, especially the students and teachers. We've lost members of staff that have been beloved by the children, children who have had specialist intervention groups, getting that extra support, really bringing their levels up. Those roles have just been erased, and now these children are fading into the background in classrooms because they need that extra support. Having to dip into my own pocket to buy resources, glue has become a luxury in a state school. Glue. We need a brand new library. At the moment we don't have one because it's in such disrepair that it needs to be knocked down and we don't have the funding to build one right now. We have not had a library since 2016. We've had to depend on teachers being very creative with their book corners and creating their own libraries and trying to get our kids out to the local library as part of a trip. We're now starting to see things 
creaking and the seams starting to gradually pull apart. There just aren't enough hours in the day, even if people are willing to do it, they can't spread themselves any more thinly than the hours in the day and the teaching year would allow. The school funding cuts are really challenging at the moment as government has changed the funding regime. Ultimately, there will be a reduced number of places available for children here. I wouldn't be sitting here if we felt that we were getting our fair share. You have to believe the future is going to be better than the past. And it's the pupils in our schools that are that future. They're the future leaders, the future managers, the future creators. The people are going to bring about change. So that's why it matters. Head teachers know these cuts aren't just damaging, they risk making school budgets completely unviable. Teachers and support staff are working longer hours under more pressure and even plugging the gaps in funding out of their own pocket. There are six simple tests for the next government to solve the school funding crisis. Number one, the Prime Minister must ensure that every school is guaranteed at least the same money per pupil as in 2015. Number two, the next Chancellor must announce new money for schools, not money taken from other areas of education spending. They need to put in an extra £2 billion a year. Number three, funding must also be restored for pupils in early years, sick form and college students, and for students with special educational needs. Number four, a funding plan must be put in place for the next 10 years as set out by the Education Select Committee. Head teachers and governors have been in the dark about their budgets for years now. This has to change. Number five, schools in historically underfunded areas must receive additional money. Fair funding won't be achieved by taking away money from some schools to give to others. Number six, rising school costs must be accounted for by the government and not passed on to head teachers and governors. This means that all new spending commitments must be fully funded by the government. No matter who's in power at Westminster, this is what it will take to ensure that every child has adequate funding for their education. We need to make it politically impossible for any government to continue underfunding schools. At this election, we have a chance to do just that. Here's how you can be a part of it. Tell every parent you know. Politicians follow public opinion, but that won't change unless parents know exactly what's happening to school funding. There are more than 7 million families with children in England. We've got to make sure that every single one of them has the facts. So hang banners, put up window posters, leaflet your community and join our social team to get the word out. Mobilise our communities. We're stronger when we work together, so take our petition to the school gates. Organise with friends and neighbours locally. Join one of our national volunteer teams. If we do this, we can raise a voice so loud no politician can ignore us. We need to apply pressure. We know what our schools need, so at this election we'll demand that every candidate pledges to protect education and properly reverse school cuts. Write to your candidates. Make sure you only vote for a candidate who has signed the pledge on schoolcuts.org.uk. Thousands of people all over the country have already begun the work. We've hung banners, we've written and lobbied MPs. At the general election in 2017, we made school funding a national priority and three quarters of a million people changed their vote as a result. This time will be different. It will be harder harder than ever to focus the media's attention on the school funding crisis. So we can only win for our schools if we organise in our communities. If you've hung a banner at your school gate, next time hang another outside your local church, temple, mosque or synagogue. If you've knocked on doors and given out a thousand leaflets, keep going. Get a bigger group together, pick a new location and do it again. If you've got a hundred signatures on our petition, go for 500, a thousand. These few weeks will be the fight of our lives, but our children are worth it. 
I'm fighting for my children and their right to a decent education. Will you join me? Start by searching how much your school stands to lose at schoolcuts.org.uk. Tell every parent you know, order campaign materials and get active in your community.